so Ant-Man and the Wasp, pretty big show. We had maybe four or five sequences. The main ones for us in effects were the car chase sequence and the uh, kind of the end fight, the end battle sequence in the quantum tunnel. The biggest challenges in Ant-Man and the Wasp was the diversity of the work that we had to do. It wasn't com the complexity itself as like, oh my God, how are we going to do that? But most about the amount of visual effects required and the differences between each individual bit. So one of the big effects that we had on the car chase sequence was uh, macro water effects. Ant-Man would come flying in on a flying ant, uh, jump onto the car windscreen wipers, and then the antagonist ghost uh, enabled the water spray from the wipers. We had one person kind of take a more kind of traditional flip sim, particle sim approach. But in the end, uh, when it moved on to uh, another artist, he took a much more procedural approach to it. Uh, used particle sims for the main, main water spray. And then whenever those points would impact on the windscreen surface, take the initial uh, the impact velocity, project that up the geometry, create a line from it, uh, scatter points, generate the water surface, take the, the water surface tension with a, a few noise vops and generate a surface using VDBs. And all of a sudden you have this kind of macro water uh, without even using a simulation, which was, I thought was very impressive. We had uh, some magical effects for the quantum tunnel, uh, lots and lots of sparks and uh, some energy, energy bursts bit of destruction as well. So we started uh, creating ideas of um, how the energy travels from these uh, coils inside of the core and kind of bundles the energy, which uh, was just a very basic uh, sob solver particle simulation. That was basically the base of the whole uh, uh, effect. And then after this kind of like, okay, now we need to have more elements in there exploding elements showing that the energy is uh, exploding and uh, the whole, whole energy is just crazy, going crazy. So then we started introducing something called a burst energy or aurora energy, which is like the, some, some of these elements copied, but just making way more extreme faster, adding more elements to it. We actually had a flipsim in there, which we used to kind of show that the energy is just like exploding and gave us some nice results because it could actually collide with the characters and with the quantum tunnel geometry. I think the advantages of a procedural workflow means that although it takes a little while to set up your, your tool or your effect at the beginning, that means that it's very easy to then process many shots and, and run many shots using this effect. On Ant-Man and the Wasp, we had the ghost phasing effect, where every time we saw the ghost character, she would be kind of shifting in and out of reality. And that setup, although it took a little while to develop the look for it, once we had that, we package it all up lots of different OTLs to manage the various aspects so we can update pieces as we went. And it, rather than having many, many artists running many shots, we could actually package it up so that one artist could run multiple shots, uh, which I think saved us a lot of uh, time in the long run. It was very good for us to be able to iterate uh, quickly, um, thanks to the, this proceduralism approach. 